compute the Laplace transform of the function f of t equals 2t minus 1. Then, verify your answer by using the initial value problem y double prime plus 4y equals 0, y prime of 0 equals 2, y of 0 equals 0. Now, call the definition of Laplace transform. We have a function f of t. It's so Laplace transform is going to be another function with variable s. We define it as indefinite integral from 0 to infinity of the function f of t, e to the minus st, and that's with respect to t. So the s here is going to be treated as a constant as far as the integration goes. Now, if we let f of t be equal to sine of 2t, what happens? Well, we're going to need to find an antiderivative of sine of 2t, e to the minus st. Okay, there's a few ways you can get that. Now, first, this is not a calculus class, so you could go look it up. Or, if you want to work it out, it's going to be two integration by parts if you do it the usual way. Or, if you're just going to use a shortcut, one thing you can note is, okay, if I take this antiderivative, well, one thing I know is, okay, we're going to get the function itself back. Then, we're also going to have a term that looks like this, but with cosine of 2t. And then there are going to be numbers out in front, which we'll find later. So we're going to go that way. Now, let's first do evaluation of limits before I solve for a and b. Now, if we take the limit as we go off to infinity, we have to worry about these functions e to the minus st, sine of 2t, and then the one with cosine. How should you think of this? Well, there's two parts here. One is e to the minus st, so let's graph that. That's just going to have, okay, at 0 we're going to have a 1, and then that just tracks down to 0 as we go off to infinity. Then, if we're taking sine of 2t, this is just a function that's going to oscillate back and forth between minus 1 and 1. So, if we multiply them together, what we're going to do is, we'll take that e to the minus st, we'll have okay, minus that below, and then our function is just going to bounce back and forth between the two graphs. So you'll note as we go off to infinity, e to the minus st, sine of 2t, okay, assuming our s is positive, it's going to go off to 0. Similar argument for e to the minus st, cosine 2t. Now, that means I'll have to worry about what happens when we put 0 in. So sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is going to be 1. E to the 0 is going to be 1. So when we work all this out, what we wind up with is minus b. Now, I want to solve for minus b. The way we do this, note I want to take the antiderivative of this function here. So that's the same as saying find me a function as so whose derivative is equal to sine of 2t e to the minus st. So the way we set this up, here's our function. I want its derivative to be equal to this. Now, I can still take the derivative of the original function, so I work that out. It's going to be a few product and chain rules. Then I want to extract a and b from the equations that I get when I set this equal to this. Okay, a couple ways to do that. One is to lump all the cosine terms together on one side, set them equal to the cosine terms on the other. Same thing with the sines. Or you just pick specific values of t that do the same thing. So for instance, if I let t be equal to zero, what's gonna happen? On this side, I get a zero. For here, the sines go to zero, cosines go to one, e's to the zero go to one, so I'm left with 2a minus sb is equal to zero. If I let t be equal to pi over 4, okay, one thing I can do first is divide through by all of the e to the whatevers, so they'll be gone. And then sine is going to go to 1, cosine goes to 0, so I'm going to be left with minus sa minus 2b is equal to 1. Now, I have two equations, two unknowns, so we're going to solve first for a, substitute that back in, and then we'll wind up getting b equals minus 2 over s squared plus 4. Now the Laplace transform is going to be minus that, 
So our answer is gonna be Laplace transform of sine of 2t equals two over s squared plus four. Now, if you go through your work, replace your two with an a, you get the Laplace transform for sine of at. So that'll be a over s squared plus a squared. We've also done all the work for the Laplace transform of cosine of at. So answer there, it's gonna be s over s squared plus a squared. So where do you make your changes? Now, in the first part, there gonna be no changes at all. Okay, we do your limits of integration, you're still gonna get out a minus b. The only change is gonna be when you solve for your a and your b. So there, instead of getting the derivative equal to sine of 2t, we want the derivative equal to cosine of 2t. The change we're gonna have, where we had zero and one before, we now change it to a one and a zero. Then, if you solve for your a and b, what's gonna come out in that special case will be minus s over s squared plus four. Okay, then we take minus b. Okay, and then you note, if you replace your two with an a, the general formula comes out. Now, let's verify our answer, okay, using sine of 2t, using the initial value problem. So the idea is gonna be sine of 2t, is gonna be a solution to this initial value problem. If I get our Laplace transform just using the initial value problem, it should agree with what we've gotten for sine of 2t. So let's take a look. Now, what's gonna drive our solution here is gonna be this identity. We're gonna have that if I take the Laplace transform of a derivative, you're gonna get Laplace transform of your original function times s minus y zero. Okay, so I show this in another video. So here we're just gonna assume it. Now, this is gonna to apply to as many derivatives as you like. So note, if I do a second derivative, well, that's just gonna be the derivative of y prime. So where I have a y here, I just put a y prime. So that's gonna give me s times Laplace transform of y prime minus y prime is zero. And then I could substitute this out using our original formula. So this is gonna give me a formula for the Laplace transform of the second derivative. Now, okay, what do we want? We're gonna take the Laplace transform of, okay, two things are equal. Laplace transforms are gonna stay equal. So we're gonna do y double prime plus four y equal to zero. Okay, Laplace transform of zero is gonna be zero. Then over here, I'm allowed to split this up, pull out the numbers. That's because of the linear property. Now, using my formula here, for y double prime, what's gonna come out? We know y prime at zero is gonna be two, y of zero is gonna be zero, so I'm gonna we'll be left with s squared L of y minus two, and then we have plus four times the plus transform of y. Move to the other side, we're left with an s squared plus four in front of our Laplace transform, so if I divide, that gives us our Laplace transform. You'll note, this agrees with our original answer. So, that verifies our work.